This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at computation and number theory. And when we talk about number theory, we're talking about the types of numbers which are also referred to as the number sets. The first set of numbers which we'll be looking at are the natural numbers, and we can represent the natural numbers on the number line by looking at the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, onwards all the way up to infinity. These numbers are also called the counting numbers. Moving right along, our next set of numbers which we'll be looking at are the whole numbers, which we can represent on a number line by looking at the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to infinity. Note that we just included the number 0 in the set we had before, so basically the set of whole numbers is found by adding 0 to the set of natural numbers. The next set of numbers which are very interesting are the integers. This is a set of negative and positive whole numbers and it's very important to note that we're talking about all of them all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity and we can represent this on the number line by looking at the numbers negative 10, negative 9, negative 8 all the way to 7, 8, 9 including all those positive numbers and negative numbers as well. The next set of numbers which we will be looking at are the rational numbers and as the name suggests these numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction a divided by b where a is a whole number and b is also a whole number. Examples 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 5, 3 divided by 10, 10 divided by 3, 7 divided by 6, 4 divided by 2, 8 divided by 4, onwards, there are so many. Note, all integers are a part of this set, right? So the next set of numbers that we move on to are the irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, these are all the other numbers which are not included in the previous sets. So to remember them, I always say that they are special non-recurring decimals, right? Special non-recurring decimals. Example, the number E. The number pi, square root of 3, the square root of 5, or even the square root of 2. The list goes on. Other number sets which we have not included in our previous sets are the even numbers, right? And the even numbers is actually a subset from the set of integers which when divided by 2, the remainder is 0. Example, negative 6 negative 4, negative 2, 0, and it's important to know that 0 is an even number. Next, we move on to the set of odd numbers. And I'll define the set of odd numbers to be the set of numbers that are not even, and they are also in the set of integers. So those set of integers which are not even are said to be Odd. And we can represent this on a number line by looking at the numbers negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 onwards. Another unique set of numbers that also comes up a lot in mathematics are the set of prime numbers. And these are numbers which have only two factors, 1 and itself. Examples 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, just to name a few. Note that 1 is not a prime number, right? And negative numbers are not prime either. The next set of numbers which we'll be looking at are composite numbers. And these numbers are whole numbers which are greater than 2 but are not prime. Examples, 4, 6, 9, 8, 18, 15, 22, and so on. Note that these numbers are given their name composite numbers because they are composed of prime numbers. Example, the number 4, if we should factorize the number 4, we can write it as 2 times 2. Note that both of these factors are prime. I can take the number 8 and factorize the number 8 as 2 times 2 times 2. 
and note that all the factors are prime. The number 15 is composed of 3 times 5, which are both prime numbers. So we see that all composite numbers can be factorized into prime factors. That's a very important note. Next, we move on to the order of operations. And across the globe, the order of operations is referred to as different names. Some people call it BOMDAS and some people call it PEMDAS where BOMDAS stands for Bracket of Multiplication, Division, Addition, and Subtraction, while PEMDAS stands for Parenthetical Expressions, Multiplication, Division, Addition, and Subtraction. Now, to demonstrate the order of operations and how to use it, we'll be looking at the evaluation of expressions involving integers. All right, so let's take some basic examples. Example number one, negative three plus two is equal to negative one. And it's important to note that when the signs are different, we subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number. So here we're working with negative 3 and a positive 2. So we're going to subtract that 3 minus 2 is actually 1. And the sign of the bigger number is negative. So the result is a negative 1. Example number 2, we have negative 5 minus 7, which is equal to negative 12. Here we want to note that when the signs are the same, we add and keep the sign. So here, if you add 5 and 7, the result is 12. And if we're keeping the sign, it's a negative 12. Example number 3, we look at the expression negative 2 plus 4, which is equal to 2. Since 4 is the bigger number, when we subtract 2 from 4, we end up with 2. And we keep the sign of 4, which is a positive 2. Example number 4, we have 1 plus a negative 3, which is equal to 1 minus 3, which is equal to negative 2 after evaluating the signs in the middle. Now we look at example number five. We have negative three minus negative two. Here the signs in the middle are both negative, so we can change that to a positive, thus becoming negative three plus two, which is equal to negative one, which, is, which simplified down to our first example. Example number six, we have two plus negative seven, which is equal to two minus seven, which is equal to negative 5. Example number 7, negative 4 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 4 minus 3, which is equal to minus 7. Example number 8, minus 5 plus 7 plus negative 3, which is equal to negative 5 plus 7 minus 3, which is equal to negative 5 plus 4, which equates down to negative 1. Example number 9, here we're looking at multiplication. We have negative 1 times 3, which is equal to negative 3. Example number 10, negative 2 times negative 4 gives us a positive 8. Example number 11, 8 divided by negative 4, right? We want to note that here, positive divided by a negative gives a negative. So when we take 8 and divide it by negative 4, the answer is negative 2. Example number 12 is negative 12 divided by negative 3, right? And when a negative is divided by a negative, the answer is positive. So this negative 12 divided by negative 3 is going to give us a positive 4. Next, we move on to the intermediary forms where we have brackets involved in the expression. Take example number 1. 4 divided by 2 in bracket multiplied by 2 minus 3 in bracket. The first thing we want to do is evaluate the expressions inside the bracket or the expressions inside the parentheses. So this will give us 2 for the first expression times negative 1 for the second expression and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now, moving right along to example number 2, we have... 34 minus 17 in bracket minus 3 times 5 in bracket. We have to evaluate the expressions in the bracket first. So here, 34 minus 17 is equal to 17, and 3 times 5 is equal to 15, thus giving us 17 minus 15, which leaves us with our final answer as 2. Example number 3 gives us 32 divided by 2 times 4 minus 2 plus 3 in bracket. Evaluating the expression in the bracket first, we realize that 2 plus 3 is 5. Thus, we have 
34 divided by 2 times 4 minus 5, and we have to evaluate 2 times 4 first because of order of operations. Multiplication is evaluated before division. This gives us 32 divided by 8 minus 5, which then gives us 4 minus 5, which is equal to negative 1. Example number 4, we have 4 minus 2 plus 7 minus 9 divided by 3. Based on the order of operations, we have to evaluate the 9 divided by 3. That gives us a 3. So our next line reads 4 minus 2 plus 7 minus 3. And if we are performing addition first, we have to take our 7 and our negative 2, which gives us 7 minus 2, or negative 2 plus 7, which, if, which works out to 5. So our next line reads 4 plus 5 minus 3, which is equal to 9 minus 3, which is equivalent to 6. There are other variations of this solution, but the final answer should come out to 6. Example number 5, we have 3 divided by 3 in bracket plus 4 times 2 in bracket minus 6 divided by 2 in bracket. Based on the order of operations, we have to evaluate the expressions in the bracket first which gives us 1 plus 8 minus 3, which is equivalent to 9 minus 3, which is equal to 6. Example number 6, we have in bracket negative 33 divided by negative 11 plus 2 times negative 3 in bracket plus negative 2 times negative 3 in bracket, which gives us 3 for the first expression plus negative 6 for the second expression plus positive 6 for the last expression. If I should evaluate this, we would get 3 plus negative 6 plus 6, which is equal to 3, minus 6 plus 6, which is equivalent to 3. Example number 7, we have 9 take away 12 divided by 3 times 2. Following the order of operations, we have to do multiplication first. So this gives us 9 minus 12 divided by 6. And then our second operation should be division so we have to take our 12 divided by 6 which gives us 2 which means our next line reads 9 minus 2 which is equal to 7. Example number 8 which is our final example before we move into number theory part 2 we have 8 plus 14 divided by 7 plus negative 2 times 7 in bracket this means we have 8 plus 2 minus 14 which gives us 10 plus negative 14, which is equal to 10 minus 14, which gives our final answer as negative 4. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in number theory part 2. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future post notification.